Chegun Shomi of the PDP, uh, PDP stalwarts. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Um, it's been a long time coming. The battle has been, you know, fought and won. Um, and your candidate, Atiku Abubakar, former vice president, also tried his best to, uh, you know, claim his mandate, so to speak. But then it, it is what it is, as we've seen. Um, would you also agree with those who have, you know, advised, such as uh, Ben Murray Bruce, who told Atiku Abubakar, to just, uh, you know, uh, take it and move Nigeria forward and accept the defeat? What's your position on this? Well, I think, first of all, we must, I must say very, very clearly that there are those who believe that the Supreme Court of any nation does not have powers to adjudicate in the best interest of the country and that the, the Supreme Court is always unnecessarily limited to narrow statute interpretations or technical rules that allows them to say, I can see the smoking gun, but I can pretend as if it was not the murder weapon. The law is very elastic, and there have been members of that particular body, not that very serious and determined crimes, who will tell you that the law cannot bind a Supreme Court and prevent it from extending the law or extending the intentions of society or adjudicating in the best interests of society. I suppose that we would just say that our election jurisprudence has not reached that level where there can be a sync between the expectations of the mass of the people and what the law is saying. For instance, it's interesting to see that they chose, it was their discretion, they chose not to accept that new evidence that was presented before them. And we would just say, once a discretionary power is given either to INEC, when it also chose not to transmit election results in the way it had promised, and a, and a, and a discretionary power is also granted to the Supreme Court, as to rules of how it accepts new evidence and does not accept new evidence, we can live with the judgment. We can really live with it. But for anybody to now, especially the president, to in a bit to react to that judgment, to use indecorous, unpresidential languages like shenanigans and such, you just say, oh, indeed, how are the mighty falling? What a great nation. Who used to be great and has the potential to be great in the future? But for now, we'll just say, well, the courts are, the final court in the land has pulled in. Has there been a miscarriage of justice, in my opinion? Yes. Could they have done more, in my opinion? Yes. Have they thought of the full implication of what they're sending to the larger society? In my opinion, they didn't think through it well. Did they have that power to have, you know, come in there and try to say, what would the Socrates of this world do? What would Darwin do? What would other men in other climes do? Would they look for the narrow interpretation of technicality or open the Pandora box and say certain behavior and certain tendencies can never be the acceptable behavior in a country like ours? I guess we can say, okay, they have ruled. And one of those ones who always believe that there are three positions when you go to an election. There's the position of the you know, people who never, ever see anything good in the country. They're the position of those who want to win at all costs, and there's the position of the patriot. A patriot looks at the position, accepts that what has been done may not be exactly up to his expectation, but also understands that in the best interest of the country, since that is the final court, then we can say rest it. But let no one come and tell us that a country as large as Trump, that has potentially 222 million people, we can be excited about their inability to be brave. I think the court was not brave enough. They could have been braver. But then you, you sorry, uh, let me just um, keep this on you. You know, you said, based on what you said, you've actually aligned with the position of a patriot. So being a patriot is also the fact that, you know, you've been called upon your party as well as the Labour Party and all other parties who, you know, lost in this race have been called upon to join hands as patriotic Nigerians with the current administration in order to move Nigeria forward. Are you saying that because you're not satisfied in the end of the, at the end of the day, you may not possibly you know, pr throw your weight behind the uh, positive movement, the forward movement or upward growth of this country in terms of governance? Careful with the use of adjective, upward movement, positive growth and all that. That's not what we're saying. And I also hold the very strong view that 
Democracy in itself does not even thrive when all parties and all persons and all political players in the country empty into the ruling party, which will most likely even, against their own interest, cost an implosion. But it's their business. Those who they want to steal, they've stolen them already. You can see how they go behind, take our members, complicate issues for each on wiki, who can make up his mind whether he's still a PDP man or he's not a PDP man. It's their personal and individual call. But some of us who have worked very hard to ensure that this democracy came into being, and some of the ones who are very young who don't remember or are not really aware of what it took to get this democracy, will always tell you that opposition is not, uh, is not a dry land like that. Opposition is not a uh, hatred of the country. Opposition is deepening the conversation around democracy, ensuring that they put the feet of the ruling party to fire, and insisting that integrity and the moral code of a nation must always constantly be improved and renewed. And if for today, these courts have said, oh, they won't take it, oh, it's late, oh, you didn't call pre the people you should have subpoenaed, you didn't front load them, they can write all sorts of technical reasons. I'll ask you. The tribunal at the early stages, if you had created another set of five judges, could they have, if they wanted, given a different judgment? You know the law is flexible. The judge has three eyes. The eyes with which he's seeing what is before him. The eyes with which he's seeing what he ought not to see. And the eyes that he closes his eyes completely to what the yearnings of society is. What is exa exactly the intention of the court and the law? The intention of the court and the law is to make sure that people in society, politicians inclusive, do not work on technical rigmarole to prevent what is good order, good chair, and in the best interest of society. They have ruled now. I have come to terms with the, with the judgment. I can even say yes. I accept that you guys have won. I can congratulate my friend Kazim, and I can congratulate Ashadi Bola Ahmed Tinubu. But I can also say, and definitely say, we do not think that the court, especially the Supreme Court of Nigeria, used all its gravitas and the things that men that have sat in that chair would have done to either speak directly to some of this issue, take into consideration the sensitivity of Nigeria, and accept that something did not add up there. And that's the way it is. There's no other court to go to. We're here. We're not complaining. We'll all have to encourage them to fix the country. They're talking a lot, but we're not seeing any great impact. Poverty is very high. The country is the way the country is. We can offer them some ideas if they are not too arrogant to listen. But bottom line is that let the country move on. Democracy came because we defeated the military ideas of staying permanently in power. We lost human life to this democracy. Some other leaders too are now pushing very hard to ensure that democratic culture is deepening. I pay obeyance to Atiku Abuaka. I wrote a piece for him where I said he's the Theodorian man because I knew that the, the, you know, the virtue is not for the man who sits in one place and criticizes and points, but the one who dirties his face, who strives again and strives again and strives again, knowing fully well that whatever the case may be, we're pushing the envelope for democracy. I pay some obeyance for Peter B2 for the energy to be able to gather young people and give them a reason to believe in their country. And for whatever is what, I say congratulations to the man that has been given the responsibility. Right. Let us wait and see how well they can interpret. And to the PDP followers, you don't need to be upset. You don't need to be angry. You don't need to feel bad. You need to pull yourself together. We were in government for 16 years. That party has just been there for 12, maybe 8, now on their way to 12. If we work very hard and go back to the drawing board and fix our lines and strengthen our party and reform it and look at it, the, the numbers are there to defeat them. And I believe that if tomorrow comes, we'll do that. <laughs>